Is your property subletting illegal? My name is Grace and welcome back to another episode of RE News, where we keep you in the loop. The hot rental market might have tempted many to illegally sublet their apartments for short-term gains. Unfortunately, it is not a matter of if you will be caught, but more of when you will be caught. In today's RE News episode, we cover how different stakeholders share responsibility in preventing illegal subletting and why people seek to illegally sublet in the first place. Everyone plays a role in preventing illegal subletting. Regulators actively enforce, communicate and educate the relevant parties. Landlords actively observe whether their property is being used unlawfully and take the necessary steps to safeguard their interests. Tenants need to be responsible in their usage of the property and know what is considered lawful or unlawful use. So why sublet in the first place? People sublet properties to book a profit or subsidise the existing rental expense. The act of subletting itself already presumes that you are re-renting out a property you have rented from a landlord. In some sense, a subletter is kind of a middleman between the landlord and another set of tenants. In the case of HDBs, this is completely illegal whether or not the landlord consents. For private properties, the landlord must consent and the subletting must be done within legal boundaries. An example would be minimum tenancy periods and a maximum number of occupants for the property. When done legally and appropriately, subletting can be a beneficial activity for all parties involved. The landlord might be the most interested in getting a tenant for a longer period of time to ensure consistency in rental income. Typically, this will lock in a main tenant to secure the landlord's rental yield for a few years. If the main tenant has some spare unused space, such as spare bedrooms, and the landlord consents to subletting, the tenant may re-rent out parts of the property to a new set of tenants. The second layer of rental income here belongs to the main tenant and can help to subsidise the rental expense for the whole apartment. In some cases, it might be possible to book a profit. One possibility is that the main tenant has a long-term rental contract with the landlord. If prices are locked in at a market rate then, and subsequently the market rate rises, the main tenant could sublet out short-term contracts at a higher price. Over time, it might be possible to make a profit if the market rate rises a substantial amount. With how the rental market has performed over the past two years, this might not be so hard to imagine. The rental market is incredibly hot. Some landlords might even have a hinge of regret having signed an agreement to a lower rental rate before the pandemic. But these market movements are often out of sight for landlords, especially those who seek stable long-term returns. At the end of the day, it is possible for a win-win deal. The landlord gets stability and less fuss over negotiating multiple rental contracts. The main tenant can get subsidised rent or book a small profit from subletting in exchange for managing subletting agreements. The second level tenant might be able to find a place that accepts short-term rentals or rentals just for a small space and not the whole apartment. Greed is not good. Quite often, what could be a win-win situation is quickly thrown into a moral dilemma or legal battle because of greed getting the better of someone. In the case of illegal subletting, the main tenant is usually the perpetrator. Landlords often have a tough time catching the illegal subletting before it's too late. Having landlords consent to subletting itself is already not a common occurrence. The main tenant might have friends or people that they know seeking out to rent only a small space and only for a short period of time. In a bid for an illegal deal here, the main tenant might be tempted to sublet the apartment without the landlord's permission and knowledge. Do note that while the topic is on subletting, landlords themselves are not allowed to rent out their properties beyond the legal number of occupants and under the minimum rental period, which is three months for private properties. The HDB regulations are a little bit more complex. The minimum period is six months in addition to many other regulations. Whether you are a tenant or the landlord, it is always good to exercise caution and practice within the acceptable legal parameters. Here's a little tip for landlords in Singapore. 
There is something that Singaporean landlords can learn from rental markets in other developed countries. In order to lower the likelihood of their properties being used to conduct illegal activities, landlords invest a lot more time into the selection process of their tenants. This makes sure that the tenants that they get can comfortably afford the place that they're renting out and are also decent people that you want to have in your home. In the United States, United Kingdom and Australia, tenancy interviews are commonplace. But we don't see this so much in Singapore. Much of it might be left in the hands of real estate agents or on a trust basis. In this case, landlords can take more responsibility moving forward. In a tenancy agreement, people typically do an in-depth qualitative background check on their tenants, precisely what they're doing, what their plans of residencies are, and the bottom line is just to get to know them better and identify what we can term as red flags. Though rental income and yields are important, so is having a responsible and good tenant. The news is often littered with events such as the one featured on CNA. This is definitely more of an anomaly than norm. Most tenants and landlords in Singapore are responsible to take the right steps. Nonetheless, there exists a need to refine the processes that we hold today in the rental market. If you are still unsure about the legalities of Singapore's rental market and wish to find out more, you can contact our experts at Property Link Brothers. We will be more than happy to help you on your rental journey, regardless of whether you are a landlord or a tenant. My name is Grace, and once again, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of RE News. I'll see you on the next episode.